interesting headline this morning. Oh, what's that? Congressman caught in midnight frolic. Good view, Dad. <laughs> Come on, Mother. I was at the reception with Katie. Who was it? The papers call him the playboy of Capitol Hill, Congressman McDermott. Last night, the police found him holding a street dance in the middle of a residential area. <laughs> The car radio was disturbing the whole neighborhood. Mac? But he was at the reception, too. You met him. Don't you remember the, the tall, slim young fellow? The one with a girl on each arm? That's right. Oh, I remember him very well. You turned around for a moment, and he tried to add me to his collection. Excuse me, Mr. Morley. Yes, Millie. Congressman McDermott is in the living room. <laughs> Glenn, do uh, respectable legislators still shake my hand? Oh, with enthusiasm and considerable awe. <laughs> Four girls, Mac? You attract them like Lind on a blue serge suit. Well, the District of Columbia is a bachelor's paradise, Glenn. Do you know that 26.9% of our women are single? You've counted. No, the Bureau of Census did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this morning's paper had a field day, didn't it? You were front page, all right. Uh -huh. Was the uh, dance nice? Well, it was short and sweet. We hardly had time to form a conga line before the police drove up. They arrived stag, I assume. Oh, did they come stag, and they <laughs> did not come to dance. They politely but very firmly closed the cotillion. Now, at this <laughs> unfortunate moment, the reporter comes by. When you saw the paper, Playboy Congressman is at it again. Oh, forget about it. Today's paper wraps tomorrow's garbage, and the public quickly forgets. <laughs> well, what can I do for you this morning? You want to talk about my housing bill? Yeah, no, sorry, Glenn, not yet. Well, what is going on? You wouldn't discuss it last night, either. Well, last night I had a girl on each arm. Your arms are free this morning. I <laughs> know, but my opinion is not. I'm still studying it. That is an important piece of legislation, Congressman. Study hard. I will. Right. Now, what can I do for you? Well, you, uh, you were out with a beautiful girl last night. Katie? Oh, yes, she is. Yeah, beautiful and uh, nice. I tried to take her away from you. I know you did, old friend. She told me. Well, is she something uh, special in your life? Well, I'm very fond of her. She's the boy's governess. You mean she lives here? Well, yes. That's the usual arrangement for a governess. Well, you lucky dog. Are you going to marry her? Marry her? Oh, slow down, Mac. Katie and I haven't got that kind of relationship. You mean you're not engaged, then? Well, certainly not. But do you have any kind of an understanding with it? Well, uh, 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 no. Are you working toward one, huh? Well, well, uh, well no, I, I guess not. I, uh, why take her out once in a while? Well, then you wouldn't mind my taking her out. Well, I don't know. Uh, I expect that... Uh, oh, now, come on, Glenn. You can't have it both ways. Either you're after this girl or you're not. Max, she wouldn't go out with you anyway. Frankly, you did not make too good an impression last well, night. I'm here to try to correct that impression. Listen, Glenn, she bowled me over. Now, come on, introduce us again, will you? Well, uh, wait a minute. She's, uh, she's in the breakfast room. Oh, they're delicious. They're tiny little meatballs cooked inside. Katie. The... Oh, excuse me. Have you finished your breakfast? Yeah, I was just sipping my coffee. Will you do something for me? Yeah, anything, Mr. Morley. Well, Mac is still in the living room, and I'd like you to go in and meet him again. He knows he made a poor impression last night, and he would like a second chance. Go ahead, Katie. Well, all right. I do not want to be unfair to him. He is one of your colleagues. Thank you, Katie. Well, by the way, he, um, he probably is going to ask you to go out with him. I hope you told him I would not do it. Well, no. I thought you'd uh, want to make your own decision. You mean you would not mind my going out with him? Well, uh, that's not the point. I mean, uh, I know you won't go out with him. Oh, why not? 
Well, because of the bad impression he made last night. Katie, I have no hold on you. Oh, no, Mr. Morley, you certainly do not. But you were wrong about Congressman McDermott. He made a very good impression. At least he knew what he wanted. Well, what do you suppose made her flare up like that? Son. Yes, Mother? You're a nincompoop. Good morning, Mr. McDermott. Good morning, Miss Holstrom. I uh, almost hoped you wouldn't remember me. Oh, I remember you. You were the one in the middle. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And also the one who stepped out of line and asking you to leave Glenn's company for mine. I apologize. It's perfectly all right, Mr. McDermott. Mr. Morley would not have minds at all. Well, let me just say this. To show that you've forgiven me, would you have dinner with me tonight? Well, actually, ma'am... I would be delighted, Mr. McDermott. Wait a minute, Katie. Yeah, Mr. Morley? Well, uh, the boys may need some help with their schoolwork tonight. I will help them after school. Oh. Katie, would you step out in the hall with me for a minute? I'd like to have a little talk with no, you. No, Mr. Morley. What time shall I be ready? Well, about 7.30. Where are your dancing shoes? What? Well, I can't promise to take you dancing in the streets, but we will go to the Starlight Room. Say, that's a great idea. Why don't we get a party together and we can all... Uh, sorry, old friend. Cheese and crackers I would share with you, but Miss Holstrom is pure caviar. Till tonight. Bye. <laughs> Oh, you're right, Mr. Morley. He's very nice. Hi. What are you doing home in the middle of the afternoon? Well, I thought I could get my work done just as easily here. Huh. Is everyone home? You mean the boys? Well, yes, the boys and uh, everyone. Oh, the boys got home from school about an hour ago. And? Uh, Millie's in the kitchen. And? I'm on the patio. Mother, come on. <laughs> right. She's in her room. Aha. Uh -huh. Moping. No, choosing a dress for the evening. She probably is hoping that I'll come up and talk her out of this date. Probably. Well, I'm not going to do it. She got herself into this and she... Will you go up there and talk to her? You're a big boy now, Glenn. Mommy's not coming to the rescue. How did I know she was going to go out with him? Why did you suggest it? I didn't suggest it. It was Mac's idea. I never dreamed she'd accept. And you needn't raise your eyebrows. Hi, Dad. Hello, Steve. Is Katie really going out with Mr. McDermott? Uh, apparently she is, yes. Boy. What do you mean, boy? If she marries him, she won't be living here anymore. Marries him? She's not going to marry him. Whatever gave you an idea like that? He's a bachelor. He is a playboy. Playboys never get married. Until they fall in love. Oh, Mother, that is ridiculous. Now, if you two will excuse me, I will go up and get some work done. <laughs> Mr. Morley? I, uh, I decided to work at home this afternoon. Oh? Yes, the, uh, housing bill. If I can get it through committee and onto the floor, I think its chances are excellent, really excellent. Good. Yes. It, uh, it will require some phone calls, though. The art of politics has been called the art of the possible. It's also the art of, uh, persuasion. Yeah. Katie. I'd like to have a little talk with you without any beating around the bush. Just a direct, straight-from-the-shoulder talk. Yeah, Mr. Morley. It's about your going out with Mac tonight. Yeah. Now, I have discussed this with Mother and with Stephen. Yeah. They both love you. Well, I'm glad, because I love them. Well, then I, I hope you'll respect their wishes. They don't want you to go out with Mac tonight. Oh, they don't. And what about you, Mr. Morley? Or are you just a messenger boy from the others? Well, I don't think you ought to go out with them either. Why not? Because it would upset your mother. Well, no, it's, it's that, uh, well, you see, Mac is a playboy and he's not your type. Oh, you make me so angry. What do you know of my type? What do you know of playboys, even? Shall I tell you what a playboy is? He is a man who wants girls on his own terms at his own convenience. That's Mac. He's got a dozen of them. Don't interrupt me. He is also a man who will not commit himself under any circumstance. And that is you, Mr. Morley. You are the playboy of Capitol Hill. What? Yeah. 
Now, would you please leave my room so I can get ready for my date? Hello, Mac. Hi, Glenn. How are you? Fine. Never better. Aren't you, uh, going a little overboard with the tuxedo? Huh? Oh, oh, sure, of course, but I'm out to win this girl. Now, the tuxedo, the flowers, the champagne, the dancing, they're all weapons, Glenn. Weapons in a bachelor's arsenal. If I had to use weapons to win a girl, I'd forget her. Ah, uh, well, then you haven't found one worth fighting for. I think maybe I have. Good evening, Mr. McDermott. Good evening, Miss Holstrom. are beautiful. Thank you. And you look very handsome. Well, thank you. I brought you a corsage. Oh, an orchid. I haven't had one in years. Uh, I've never cared much for orchids. They, uh, they don't have any smell. Neither do pearls, Mr. Morley, but it does not detract from their beauty. Hey, don't you look lovely? You should always do your hair like that. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Morley. And you, Mac, you're a fashion plate. Well, thank you, Mrs. Morley. When I cross your threshold, I feel I have that obligation. <laughs> Isn't he nice? Oh, brother. Very. <laughs> Shall we go? Let's. Well, there's no need to rush right off. Would you like me to fix you a drink? Uh, no, thanks. Go ahead. Hey, Katie, how about you? No, thank you, Mr. Morley. Shall we? Oh. Well, uh, just a minute. Why don't you stay for dinner? We've got some delicious roast beef. Thank you, Glenn. We have a reservation after you. Well, well, uh, just a second. Did you complete your study of my bill? I did. Well, uh, it comes up for a vote tomorrow. Are you with me? No, I'm sorry, Glenn. No. No? Well, that's right. We need a housing bill, but yours in its present form is not it. It doesn't begin to solve the problem. Well, it goes a long way. There is such a thing as fiscal responsibility. <sighs> yes, and there's also such a thing as human responsibility. One has to be weighed against the other, and on my scales, your bill is lacking. Well, it's a start. Well, so is a pup tent, but it's not enough. Good night, Mr. Morley. Good night. Good night, Mrs. Morley. Good night. Good night, Katie. Have fun. comfortable for you to tell me, and uh, perhaps a little that is uncomfortable. Uncomfortable? Oh, that's not fair. You peel me like an onion. Don't you want to hear some uh, funny stories or amusing anecdotes? No, oh, if that is what you wish to tell me. But then I would not know you at all, would I? sort of an hour is this to be getting in? What kind of an example are you setting for the children? Where have you been all this time? Hitting every nightclub in town? I'll make her crawl. Oh, no, I can't do that. What on earth are you doing up? Why aren't you asleep? I was writing letters. <laughs> Sleep is the boon of the young, the bane of the old. I thought I heard you shouting at Katie. Oh, well, that. Well, I was, uh... Practicing? <sighs> yeah. Shouting is an excellent method of communication over great distances. Do you want to communicate over a great distance? No. Then don't shout. Good night. Good night, Mother. Yeah, 
after that, Mother and I were grindingly poor. She worked when she could. I sold papers and did odd jobs. <laughs> this sounds like a soap opera, doesn't it? No, please go on. Well, she died when I was a senior in high school, right there in that filthy tenement. Neighbors took me in. They were good people. But I, I slept on a cot in the kitchen, and the faucet dripped. Oh, I can still hear that faucet. <laughs> How did you get through college? Well, I worked. Did anything and everything. I was a soda jerk, a waiter, busboy, janitor, you name it, and I have done it. But you got through, and you did get your degree. Oh, yes. Well, I was well motivated. I wanted to get out of that tenement and away from that leaky faucet. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did, and isn't it funny? I am now known as the playboy of Capitol Hill. Yeah, but according to Mr. Morley, also a very good congressman. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I hate to oppose Glenn on that housing bill, Katie. You do not think the bill is strong enough? No, no, not nearly. If one citizen is left inadequately housed, then the bill is too weak. Well, Glenn doesn't seem to realize that. Well, how could he with his background? The Morleys have always had money. Well, aren't you a snob? A snob? Oh, a snob. Poverty does not automatically bestow righteousness nor wealth or lack of conscience. Now, Mr. Morley has written a housing bill you did not. It is not a perfect bill, it is a compromise. But, as Mr. Morley says, politics is the art of the possible. It is as strong a bill as he felt it possible to pass, and now it is up to you. Now, if you vote against it, it won't even get past committee. Now, what do you say? Say? I say I wish I had you in my corner. <laughs> Well, I was trying to be quiet. Oh, that's quite all right. I was just on my way down to get a little snack. Uh, did you have a good time? You're a very good time. Good, good. Well, good night. Good night. Oh, uh, Katie. Yeah, Mr. Morley. Uh, I just wanted you to know that I like you very much. I like you, too, Mr. Morley. I am fond of you. I'm glad. It's a warm fondness. Good. Very warm. Good. It's almost like... It's me. Yaw, Mr. Morley. 
Katie, don't you think we ought to have a little talk? Why? Well, uh, uh, would you mind opening the door? Did you want to talk about? Uh, about life and, and things like that. Don't you know what I mean? No, Mr. Morley. Call me Glenn. Glenn. have stopped talking. Will you please go back to bed? I'm hungry. So am I. I'm starved. Oh, brother. Come on, everybody. Have a fix some scrambled eggs. Oh, good. Wonderful idea. I'm famished. Cheer up, Congressman. That's tomorrow. And tomorrow, and tomorrow. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, you ought to be on top of the world. Your bill passed the committee. Mm-hmm. Aren't you well? Oh, I'm fine. I'm just, uh, worried about Katie. Why? Well, she's not anywhere around, is she? She's upstairs. Well, last night, just before we came down for the scrambled eggs, I think I may have given her the impression that I am, uh, romantically involved with her. No. Yes, and that's why I'm worried. Your logic escapes me. Well, uh, Katie is the sort of woman who might uh, misinterpret. I beg your pardon. She might expect it to lead to marriage. Oh, I should think she would. <laughs> I'm not ready for marriage yet. I'm, I'm too... Uh... Young? Well, no. Old? No, certainly not. Tall. All right, Mother, that's enough. Son. Yes, dear? Yesterday I called you a nincompoop. I was wrong. I apologize. Oh, that's quite all right. What you really are is a blithering idiot. <laughs> You can't resist that guy. Stay tuned for Here Come the Brides, coming up next on TV 39. Got a smile that's sprinkled with sunshine. Look at the farmer's daughter. She'll perk up your morale. Her brand of charm is so disarming. Crowns turn upside down. We owe what that to Sweden. She's just what we've been needing. So glad the farmer's daughter came. Thank you. 